I get a lot of questions about my fast finger picking technique, you know, stuff like this. And I've not really done a back to basics type of video for a while, so I thought I'd do that this week. Now the technique itself is based on the classical guitar technique, so all I'm doing is thumb third, second, first, over and over again. And that confuses some people actually because they think I'm, I'm resetting my finger pattern or doing something different when I'm crossing strings. And I'm really not. I am just going thumb third, second, first. Over and over again, irrespective of the string that I'm playing, irrespective of where I'm coming from or to, it is always thumb third, second, first. And that, that simplicity, if you like, gives, gives the movement a lot of power. Um, the reason why I do this actually is, is that as a movement, this is an inherently fast movement. It doesn't take a lot of effort to get really quite a fast speed out of it. And, and the reason why is because for the movement, every movement is actually for finger movements. So if you look at what any one finger's doing, if you look at what my thumb's doing, it's just doing that. And all the other fingers are just playing that fast as well. And actually, I've got a lot of headroom there. I could. My thumb can move a lot faster than that. So if you like, being able to develop this is not about getting the speed. Speed is speed is already there. You probably already have, have enough speed to be able to play notes that fast with your thumb. This is much more about uh, developing the technique. It's, it's inherently, it's a fast movement, but it's an awkward movement. And the thing about awkwardness is that it becomes familiar with practice. So this is something that you can just develop. You can develop that familiarity with movement and, and the speed will just be there. The speed is just there. So the thing to focus on, the things to focus on in the early days are, are not speed at all. They are things like finger strength, finger independence. It's about evenness of movement. It's about left hand and right hand synchronization and then generalizing the technique over time. Those are the things, those are the areas that you focus on, and those are the things that I thought I'd just talk about this week. So let's, let's kick off with uh, finger independence and, and evenness and strength. So let's zoom in. So with a movement like this, uh, you're working with four fingers. You're working with thumb, third, second, and first. Now, for most people, pretty much every finger style guitarist, their thumb and their index finger are their strongest fingers, their middle finger less so, and their ring finger even less than that. And so it is worth just building up the strength of your middle and ring fingers. And the easiest way of doing that is just to start playing scales, or even just starting to emphasize them. What I like to do is to just alternate between middle and ring finger. And all it takes is five or ten minutes a day. And it really doesn't matter what you're playing, you can even put on a backing track and do some improvisation. But just restrict yourself to using the third and middle finger. Before long, you'll find that your third finger is capable, is as capable as the other fingers, or at least capable enough to contribute to your playing. So the next area to touch on is evenness of movement. So let's take a closer look. With a movement like this, the speed's inherent, but what isn't inherent is, is evenness. And you need to be thinking about evenness from the point of view of rhythm. Is every note equally spaced? So what you don't want to be doing is that kind of sound. You want to make sure 
every note is nice and evenly spaced. And the, the two fingers to watch out for is thumb to third. That tends to be the one that you, uh, you get quite wrong. And the other thing to think about is evenness of tone and volume. And the, the finger to watch out for there is the thumb. The thumb is so much stronger than the other fingers and it hits the string from a different direction. So very often the thumb tends to hit the string harder than the other fingers and creates a slightly different tone. So that's the thing to work on. The other thing I'm doing here is that I'm actually playing on the B string, so it's an inner string, and my E and G string can ring as well. So what I'm trying to do is, is work on my accuracy when I'm playing this. So if I hit the string wrongly or I hit one of the others, I can hear it straight away. So you want to build up your accuracy until you're really just hitting that B string. And again, speed is secondary, it's all about accuracy. Accuracy and evenness are the things that you're working on when you're doing this. So with a technique like this, you, you will find as you develop it that your right hand becomes quite a bit faster than the left hand when you're playing normal scales and things. And that's not that surprising because this is a four note movement. You know, you're cycling around four notes with your right hand, but with most, most scales and things, if you're not playing a, a chromatic, you tend to have only three notes or two notes or one note that the left hand is covering. So this is able to play more notes in a movement than this hand is. And so it's very easy to start blurring away with this hand and then blurring away with this hand and not synchronizing the two. So that is the thing, that is probably the, the key thing to work on. And the easiest way of starting is just with a little three note pattern. And just see if you can synchronize the two hands. And this is the, the fundamental for, for all of your three notes per string scales. There's little three notes per string patterns. So if you can synchronize these, you've, you've got the fundamentals of being able to play all the major and the minor scales. Okay, on to generalizing the technique. So, generalizing the technique, there is no one way of doing this. This really is what you will spend the majority of your time doing over the remainder of your, your time with the instrument, really. Um, so, by generalizing the technique, what you're trying to do is to be able to apply this to any scale. So, it could be three notes with string scales or pentatonics. Various fingerings of pentatonics, um, arpeggios. Um, so any exercise, pretty much all of my videos, all of my videos that talk about picking are about really generalizing the technique. The one thing I would suggest though, with a movement like this is, is to start to recognize which finger you're starting a phrase with and, and deliberately varying that. Again, this is a four finger pattern. And most of the time, you will naturally start a phrase with your thumb. So just try starting the same phrase with your index finger. And you'll find it feels quite different. And then the middle finger. And then the ring finger. And as always, you're trying to get all of these different phases in, in alignment so you can play anything with any finger, starting from any finger, uh, play any arpeggio, any scale. And this, as I say, this is what you'll spend the remainder of your, your guitar playing career doing, building, 
building out that vocabulary, generalizing the left and the right hand. So like anything, this is going to take time to develop. You're not going to get these skills overnight, but it's not going to take that long. When I was working on this originally, um, I was at secondary school, I think, when I first discovered the classical guitar piece Recuerda hasta la Alhambra. And that was the thing that introduced me to the classical guitar technique. Um, and then I started experimenting with that on the electric guitar. And by the time I was 17 or 18, I, I remember I was just pushing it to see how far I could go, how fast I could go. And I was getting scales at over 18 notes a second. Um, so it is, it is something that you can develop. You can develop relatively quickly and you can get some decent speed out of it if you put the time and effort in. So see how you get on with it. Obviously, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask me and I'll do my best to answer. Otherwise, we'll chat next time. Goodbye.